For a movie that came out at a film festival, was it worth getting a theatrical release? Let's go ahead and find out. details in the beginning of the story. It's like a little bit inconclusive. It makes you kind of follow what's actually happening and then little by little, piece by piece, you know, the story gets revealed about what the actual plot is. It was a little so slow at times. It was uh, a little bit weird. It was kind of like different from other movies I've watched. Eventually I kind of got it near the end. It was a little um, sketchy. I mean, I, definitely I didn't think it was linear. Kind of, you know, put these pieces together like as the story went along. At the end, it's kind of like a bit confusing, a little bit. I like this. I need to watch it again or something. Yeah, I <laughs> to catch up time. things, you know, that I didn't catch for some. I need to like rewatch it. I think to fully understand it. I don't know if I got it right or wrong uh, as far as figuring out what the actual meaning of the story was. <laughs> the story is good. I just got to like it for the end to be more like. A bit different. It, it was okay. It was okay. I mean, it, it, it got my attention. The, the movie, like, is suspenseful, and I think through it all, it keeps you interested in the movie. Yeah, I didn't think there was anything special. I would like it to be more conclusive. I didn't think it was anything Oscar worthy. It was just a typical mystery thriller. It makes you jump. That was just a couple of people from the advanced screening at the movie theater. Welcome back to the channel, guys. We are here reviewing The Night House. All right, so The Night House is starring Rebecca Hall. She plays a character named Beth. She is a widow because she lost her husband. He shot himself. He committed suicide. But then she starts discovering some secrets. And if you've seen the trailer, the movie feels like it's your typical thriller. Usually it's a premise that we've all seen before. Either a husband or a wife dies and then things start to happen in the house after their death and apparently it's them or just some other spiritual being and this movie starts to feel like that but it doesn't try to be that usual thriller where the person that's deceased just decides to haunt the house and for no apparent reason and that was that's the two hours of the movie that we get to see instead of the story being more on the paranormal side the movie tries to be a little bit more mystical and dealing more with illusions rather than hauntings it even has this sense of stranger things if you've seen stranger things that you know what i'm talking about when i say the upside down world the upside down is this reverse world that coexists within the real world and this movie does that it puts that within the plot where there's this reverse world that coexists at the same time but it's this world that's accessed even through dreams and we even see that in the movie's title. If you look closely, we have the G and the S reversed in the movie's title. What I like about this movie is that it's not filled with a bunch of jump scares. And even the jump scares that were in this movie weren't really as predictable as the usual ones. I like that the situations that Rebecca Hall goes through, they're not really considered paranormal, but they're more of illusions. They're more of optical illusions even. All these distortions, all this imagery that you see throughout the movie, they are disturbing in a way, and that's what makes it very suspenseful. That's what makes it very thrilling. It's not your usual thriller where uh, somebody dies and the ghost is just haunting the house. Although at times the movie does feel like that because it has everything to be just that type of movie. I mean, we have some lonely woman in alone in her house, alone in a big house with clear windows, clear doors, out in the lake, by the woods. So it has everything to be like that. It even feels like that at times. And at, but then at times you start to feel like, okay, it's doing, I can see that it's trying to do something very different. It's a little bit of a slow burn in the beginning. And then it really picks up almost until towards the end of the movie. That's where we really get more information. And But throughout the movie, you get little pieces. You get little bits of information. And it's one of those movies that it tries to get the viewer to put the pieces together. Well, that's how I found myself personally. I'm, I found myself trying to put everything together, trying to solve the mystery along the way. And as you get every new piece of info, you kind of have to restart the process and be like, okay, let me look at my evidence that I had so far and let's see if it adds up. And then you start to come up with your own theories. Again, if you're one of those people that enjoys solving the mysteries, being that sort of detective type, then you're gonna like this movie. But if you're one of those that thinks, okay, I just want a movie that gets straight to the point, that can be suspenseful, that can be mysterious, but then have those twists and turns. Somebody that doesn't really like to do any other work, then you're probably not gonna like this movie. Which is the reason why I can see why it was confusing a few people, and that's the opinion, that's the reaction that I got from the interviewers that I got. The story doesn't take huge, giant twists and turns. 
when you get a new piece of info, you start to rethink your thoughts and you're like, oh, okay, I might be wrong. So let me rethink my theories. And then the ending, the big reveal is something that could seem a little lazy, honestly, because the whole reason, the whole motives behind these hauntings or illusions, it wasn't as thought out as I thought it would be. But then while thinking about it, it could be something symbolic. I saw it as something symbolic for death, something symbolic for death itself, as much like Final Destination, how they mention death being some sort of existing being or a force, a force that does things. And that's why all these people die because they have a list. I thought of it a little bit like that of death having some, being some sort of force and also therefore being part of the reason why Beth's husband died and why she was kind of chosen for a reason. But again, it's, I feel like it's one of those stories where it's open for interpretation. It's open for the viewer to really interpret it themselves. There's really no right or wrong answer what this ending could be like. From what it looks like, I think it's gonna be one of those movies where a lot of other people are gonna be doing videos on the explanation of the ending. But in the end, I will say that The Night House is a VOD. Yeah, I guess so, yeah. <laughs> All right, so if you've seen The Night House or if you're going to see The Night House, then let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comment section below. If you like this video, then smash that like button, smash the subscribe button. Thank you guys again so much for watching. Until next time.